discussion of multiple choice questions in cardiology which of the following is not used as a drug challenge to unmask the brugada type 1 ecg pattern a ajmelin b flaconide c propofenol d propranolol correct answer d propranolol drug challenge is used when there is clinical suspicion in the form of syncope agonal respiration and family history but ecg does not show the classical type 1 brugada syndrome ecg sodium channel blockers are used to unmask the ecg changes of the disease drug challenge should be cautiously done with continuous ecg monitoring and occurrence of qrs widening more than 130 percent of baseline frequent ventricular ectopics or complex ventricular ectopy mandate discontinuation of drug infusion to prevent life-threatening ventricular arrhythmias. In case of prolonged cardiac arrest, advanced cardiopulmonary resuscitation with extracorporeal membrane oxygenator may be needed in refractory cases. Intravenous ajmelin or flaconide can be used for the drug challenge in Brugada syndrome. Alternative drug is procainamide, oral flaconide or propofenone are used when intravenous class 1 antiarrhythmic agents are not available. One more reference on drug challenge to unmask Brugada syndrome. Disease specific mortality in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy A. 0.5% per year B. 5% per year C. 10% per year D. 15% per year Correct answer A. 0.5% per year Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is the commonest among heritable heart diseases with prevalence of about 1 in 500 individuals. HCM is often highlighted as the leading cause of sudden death in young adults and athletes. Still, the absolute annual mortality in HCM is not high with availability of current treatment modalities including the implantation of cardioverter defibrillator to prevent sudden death. It has been reported to be as low as 0.5% per year by Barry J. Maron, the leading authority on hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. After interrogating databases in two HCM referral centers, data on 1653 patients between 1992 and 2013 were gathered by them. Of these, 87% had survived at the end of follow-up, 72% of deaths were unrelated to HCM, the predominant cause of death being cancer in older subjects. References on disease-specific mortality in HCM Which of the following is not an adverse effect of desmopressin used in the treatment of postural hypotension? A. Water intoxication B. Hyponatremia C. Severe hypertension D. Nocturnal diuresis Correct answer D. Nocturnal diuresis. Suppression of nocturnal diuresis is an important mechanism of action of low dose desmopressin. Desmopressin is a synthetic analog of the naturally occurring pituitary hormone, which is 8 arginine vasopressin, antidiuretic hormone or ADH. The drug acts on vasopressin receptor type 2 in the renal collecting ducts and increases water reabsorption, causing water retention. The synthetic molecule has only minimal action on vasopressin receptor type 1 on blood vessels. Hence, the effect of vasoconstriction is minimal at antidiuretic doses. Desmopressin can be administered either as a nasal spray or oral tablet. Very low doses of 5 micrograms may be enough to suppress nocturnal polyuria in patients with orthostatic hypotension. Nocturnal polyuria and consequent volume depletion is likely to cause early morning syncope or syncope while going to toilet at night. Patients with orthostatic hypotension due to central neurodegenerative disorders like multiple system atrophy have loss of vasopressin producing neurons in the suprachiasmatic nucleus of hypothalamus. Normal circadian rhythm of arginine vasopressin secretion ensures higher antidiuretic effect at night which ensures that there is no nocturnal polyuria permitting good sleep. 
Loss of this circadian pattern leads to nocturnal polyuria, hypovolemia and orthostatic hypotension. Side effects of fludrocortisone does not include A. Hypokalemia B. Weight gain C. Supine hypertension D. Postural hypotension Correct answer D. Postural hypotension Fludrocortisone is an important drug for the treatment of postural hypotension. It is a synthetic steroid with mineralocorticoid activity. It increases sodium reabsorption in the renal tubules. The drug in turn increases potassium excretion and causes hypokalemia. Sodium retention causes volume expansion and decreases the chance of postural hypotension. For the same reason, it may cause supine hypertension in these patients. Often, supine hypertension is an important problem in some of the disorders which cause orthostatic hypotension. Though high doses of fludrocortisone have glucocorticoid activity, it seldom produces steroid-induced diabetes or secondary adrenal insufficiency, the two common problems with glucocorticoids. Weight gain due to fluid retention may be seen only in higher doses of 0.3 to 1 mg per day and need not occur in lower doses of 0.1 to 0.2 mg per day. Supine hypertension in fludrocortisone treated patients with orthostatic hypotension may be quite significant enough to cause reported instances of hypertensive retinopathy and cardiomegaly. References on side effects of fludrocortisone Which of the following direct oral anticoagulants is most suitable in a patient with atrial fibrillation and renal dysfunction? A. Dabigatran B. Apixaban C. Rivaroxaban D. Betrixaban Correct answer B. Apixaban Elimination of Apixaban is mainly hepatic and hence accumulation in renal dysfunction is minimal. Hence, it is the best suited drug in renal impairment. A retrospective cohort study of end-stage kidney disease had 2,351 patients on Apixaban and 23,172 patients on warfarin. There was no significant difference in the risks of stroke or systemic embolism between apixaban and warfarin. At the same time, bleeding risk was significantly lower with apixaban. The standard apixaban dose of 5 mg twice daily was associated with lower mortality and stroke or systemic embolism. It may be noted that apixaban dose must be reduced to 2.5 mg twice daily if two of the following three conditions are there. 1. Serum creatinine 1.5 mg per deciliter or more, weight below 60 kg, age 80 years or more. Dabigatran, Rivaroxaban and Betrixaban have significant renal excretion and safety is reduced in the presence of renal dysfunction. This is more so when drugs which inhibit cytochrome P450 and transfer permeability glycoprotein like amiodarone are used as co-prescription. Many patients with non-valvular atrial fibrillation who receive DOAC for stroke prevention also need amiodarone for atrial fibrillation. Rastelli procedure is done for A. Tetralogy of Fallow B. Total Anomalous Pulmonary Venous Connection C. D. Transposition of great arteries with left ventricular outflow tracts obstruction and VST. D. Eisenmenger syndrome. Correct answer C. D. Transposition of great arteries with left ventricular outflow tract obstruction and VST. The ventricular septal defect is widened and the infundibular septum resected followed by baffling of the left ventricle to the aorta. Right ventricular outflow tract is reconstructed with a homograft or another suitable conduit. References on Rastelli procedure Duration of rheumatic fever prophylaxis for rheumatic fever with carditis but no residual heart disease. No valvular disease either clinical or echocardiographic evidence. A. 5 years or 18 years whichever is longer. B. 10 years or 21 years whichever is longer. C. 5 years or 21 years, whichever is earlier. D. Lifelong. Correct answer B. 
10 years or 21 years, whichever is longer. Duration of secondary rheumatic fever prophylaxis. Recommendations of American Heart Association. Rheumatic fever with carditis and residual heart disease. At least 10 years since last episode and at least until age 40 years. Sometimes lifelong prophylaxis. Rheumatic fever with carditis but no residual heart disease. No valvular disease clinical or echocardiographic evidence 10 years or 21 years whichever is longer rheumatic fever without carditis 5 years or until age 21 years whichever is longer reference on AHA recommendation for rheumatic fever prophylaxis Glen Shun is between A. Iota and right pulmonary artery B. Superior vena cava and left pulmonary artery C. Superior vena cava and right pulmonary artery D. Iota and left pulmonary artery Correct answer C. Superior vena cava and right pulmonary artery Glen Shun connects the superior vena cava to right pulmonary artery End of right pulmonary artery is anastomosed to superior vena cava Proximal portion of right pulmonary artery is ligated so that no flow occurs to the main pulmonary artery or left pulmonary artery from the superior vena cava a bidirectional gland shunt connects the superior vena cava to the right pulmonary artery in an end to side fashion so that superior vena cava blood can flow to both lungs. Wave length of reentry is the distance traveled by the reentry wave during a refractory period. It is a product of conduction velocity and refractory period, b conduction velocity divided by refractory period. C. Refractory period divided by conduction velocity. D. None of the above. Correct answer. A. Product of conduction velocity and refractory period. If the wavelength is shorter than that of a potential electrical re-entry circuit, it will reach the point of origin during the refractory period and die out. This is because the point of origin remains refractory. If the wavelength is longer than that of the circuit, it reaches back at the point of origin after it recovers from refractiveness and a re-entry is initiated.